Hey all, here are always reviews. Today we're taking a quick look at the Broe PNS300. This is a portable power station that can be handy if you're going outdoors and camping, or during winter time if you're experiencing power outages, extreme weather. It can also be useful with a standard AC slash DC plug here on the side that you can use for heaters and other appliances. This model in particular has a 288 watt hour capacity, roughly equivalent to 70,000 milliamp hours, and it's rated to charge average smartphones around 22 times, as well as laptops around 5 times, can also power a TV for roughly 2 hours, and a mini fridge for around 5 hours as well. What I will say though is, as a disclaimer, again this is really meant for a backup purpose at home or if you're going camping, as opposed to if you're traveling on a plane, for example, where the limit is around 100 watt hour for the battery capacity before it becomes difficult to carry on. And aside from the large capacity, this model in particular I think looks quite stylish with the synthetic leather kind of wrap here on the side that also includes a mini pocket that you can use to store something small including cables inside. It also has handles on the top that you can use to attach an included strap for putting it over your shoulders and also has a built-in LED torch so it can illuminate darker areas and even has a interesting little thermometer on the edge for telling you the temperature of the current environment that you're in as well as the conventional LCD screen that tells you the battery percentage. In particular, the AC plug is rated to provide up to 300 watts, and the USB Type-C port can supply up to 100 watts of power delivery charging, so good enough for even laptops, including MacBooks, whereas the standard USB Type-A port can supply up to 18 watts, which is still going to be compatible with Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0 protocol, but obviously slower than the Type-C port as well as the full AC plug there on the side. There's even a car charger slot here on the top, so this one here will provide upwards of 120 watts. There is a fan inside that will kick on if the battery's temperature reaches past 55 degrees Celsius to prevent overheating and it will of course turn off charging once everything reaches 100%. So you can use it from negative 10 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius. Again, if you are in colder versus warmer conditions, it should still be fully operational. Although the battery itself is obviously not going to be waterproof. And as far as recharging up the power station itself when it runs out of juice, you have a couple of methods including the AC adapter, just plugging it in, it will take around 5 hours to fully top up, which is really not bad considering the cell capacity, but you can also use the Type-C port for input and charging the power bank, taking around three and a half hours, or you can even use both the AC plug and the Type-C port at the same time and fully recharge the power station in just two and a half hours. And this model weighs in at around eight pounds, so of course it's heavier than a standard power station. It's gonna be more compact, but this is again meant for higher capacity use to get extra charges if you really need the added endurance. Again, for RV life, for camping purposes, it might come in handy. The cells that they're using claim to be high quality, lasting upwards of 10 years, and the pricing here comes in just a little bit north of $200 or so with coupons applied at checkout. So it's not bad for the capacity that it provides. You actually get quite a few included goodies and accessories inside of this little pouch. First of all, there is the AC power adapter, which again is quite similar to a laptop charger, but again, you can use Type-C if you prefer, which is more universal and compact, and it splits it into two ends. And then we also have a kind of braided USB Type-C cable, which is also wrapped in a leather material similar to the strap on the outside. You also get the car charger plug as well if you want to charge the power bank in your car. And you also get a mini screwdriver for untightening and attaching the strap, which is optional onto the top of the power station. So here's what the power station looks like with the handle there attached at the top and screwed on in. And you can now sling it over your shoulder or still use the, of course, carrying bar to just hold it with your hands. Located on the very top here is going to be a flashlight key, so I can actually long hold for a couple of seconds to illuminate the light here, which is quite bright. Even if we turn off all of the surrounding lights, you can still use this for purposes like reading, again, as your flashlight source if you're going camping outdoors. You can tap once to dim the light into more of a minimum setting, and then once more to go into a kind of flashing mode if you are in an emergency, you're trying to call out SOS for help, and there's also a fast strobing mode as well if you are really looking for assistance. What's also unique here is that the diffuser over the lamp can also be removed magnetically to unveil the LED beads underneath. If you want a brighter illumination, this will provide you with an even 
and clear output of the LED beams inside versus, again, that slightly more diffuse mode your indoors and reading, for example. It's a thoughtful design touch I wasn't really expecting, and because it is magnetic, you can even stick this onto the thermometer section if you're not using it to prevent it from getting lost, since this part is also magnetic. So a lot of small details here which are quite well designed. Down below here is going to be the fan, so this is the part that will start to whirl to prevent the inherent power bank from overheating if you are charging multiple devices at once. It still is relatively quiet though. We can tap once to activate the AC switch as well as manually turn it off, go into DC mode instead, turn on and off the display that we'll see in a moment located on the other edge. Down below here there's also a kind of DC input for charging up the power bank as well as some output ports which are using a barrel plug. This is another mode of charging other appliances including maybe older style laptop chargers that you may have, although it may not be as common as just a regular AC plug or using USB type A and USB type C here on the edge. And by the way, we have two of those respective ports. Again, both type A ports provide up to 18 watts output. And then the first type C port here provides 18 watts output as well, whereas the second one is the fast charging that can reach up to 100 watts. You're going to want to use this one again for modern laptops and smartphones. And now located on the other edge is going to be the aforementioned display that you can wake up. It's illuminated, tells you the power percentage remaining in the battery pack, as well as down below here is going to be the thermometer. So one slight con is that you can't really see it super easily in darker environments, but it does have a very cool vintage aesthetic going on matches well with the leather design that they have on the sides. Powder ring measures degrees Celsius, and then the inner measurements here show degrees Fahrenheit. Last but not least, here's what the power station looks like on the back. We have just the company's logo and some additional accent work on the plastic. And now a quick demo of charging. We're using the Type-C and Type-A ports at the moment, and indeed it is providing fast charging rates on supported devices really without breaking a sweat, and most devices will charge up in around an hour to an hour and a half. And now I've plugged in a laptop, again still using about a 100 watt Type-C power delivery port, and you can tell that charging is still going to continue, again on most MacBooks, Chromebooks, Windows laptops using Type-C standard. You can also get a reading of the wattage that it's drawing from the power bank on the very top there, which will continuously fluctuate, just to give you a quick estimation. So again, charging multiple devices simultaneously doesn't seem to be too problematic, and the entire power station in the USB Type-C and Type-A mode isn't really activating the fan. It's really when you're using the AC slash DC port when that fan will kick in if you're drawing more juice. What I will say though is to activate the USB charging ports, you do have to first press the DC button here. So after you click there and then whatever cables you plug into the Type-A as well as Type-C ports will begin to charge. And now we are charging the power station by plugging it into the wall using that Type-C port and you can tell there's an in logo being displayed currently drawing 92 watts and you can see that the icon here will start to grow upwards indicating that it's being charged back up. You can of course still charge something using the power station's other ports at the same time so it has pass-through charging as well. You can still see the wattage that's being drawn out on the very top. And now also testing out the AC plug, we have this connected to a lamp at the moment so if we plug it in we should see that the Govi lamp on the end here will then pop onto light. So whether it's going to be appliances like lights, TVs, fans, so on and so forth, it will all be compatible using the standard plug. Similarly, other kitchen appliances, again, if you are cooking outdoors or during a power outage, can also be plugged in just using it as a battery-powered generator of sorts, and you can even plug in solar panels on here as well into the barrel plug on the side for it to charge up using solar energy if you're outside. That can be another way of providing input into the power station was passed through onto other devices that you plug on in, so quite versatile in that sense. Alright, so that is more or less it as far as our quick hands-on review of the Broe PNS300. Again, power stations, extra large power banks aren't anything new, we've seen quite a few in the past, but they are useful to have again for camp being, going outdoors, and just as an emergency power source if you are living in an area that has frequent power outages, especially in the winter season. That being said, this model in particular I think just stands out a little bit more because of the more stylish design, some of the leather accents and handles, as well as just having a few clever touches including the integrated LED flashlight. They can also remove the diffuser as well as that thermometer there on the edge. The 
overall charging rate and performance is also quite competitive. I think 100 watts is more than fast enough, even though, yes, we have seen power banks that are coming out with GAN that sometimes can reach even higher wattage outputs at times, which on supported Type-C devices might be able to squeeze out even faster charging performance. But honestly, I think 100 watts is still more than adequate, not to mention the full-size AC port is really convenient for other types of plugs and power supplies, which are not going to be using USB. Of course, if they wanted to provide a second gen model, they could consider adding maybe a second AC port on the side if you want to plug in two devices at once, since it is a pretty large capacity cell at the end of the day. That could be a nice to have, but ultimately I think it already is pretty well performing for the overall price bracket that it sits in. So you can learn more details if interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. Again, a pretty stylish portable power station from Broe. This is the PNS300.